Happy Tuesday, everybody. <laughs> what did you do there? Did you see that? I went to wave and I went. <laughs> Hi, guys. Sorry, I just That's knocked myself most, out there. That's the most pathetic wave I've ever shot. <laughs> I think it's a bit weak. <laughs> oh, sorry. Welcome back to Lot on Your Plate. Oh, welcome back, guys. <laughs> it's kind of chaos vibes today, I would say. <laughs> I really hope it continues to stay chaos because we're in for a ride on this episode. It's going to be Literally. hopefully <laughs> funny. Ha! <laughs> no, what's that guy on TikTok who goes, can't wait for this episode, ha ha. <laughs> it's going to be well funny, ha ha. <laughs> well, if you have watched last week and seen our stories, we're here, we're back for sex part three. <clears throat> Embarrassing confessions, disasters, fetishes? Mm-hmm. And what's a shame is nothing's changed on like our part because we're still in long-term relationships. Missionary. <laughs> still just lying in missionary doing fuck all. <laughs> Marie's face. Still just taking no giving, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I don't think that would shock a single person in this world, but anyway. What's funny is we're not even lying. It's all truth to you. Oh, well. Anyway, we'll start off by saying... So we have now some gorgeous fresh flowers delivery from Mud in our gorgeous strawberry vase here. So would you like to say what they are? Narcissist. <laughs> Not narcissist. <laughs> Narciss narcissist and tulips. Tulips. Chew. Tulips. 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 We need to just refer to our friend Molly um, wrote in the chat. Like, Zoe, why do you say herb? And we're like, surely to fuck. I'm taking the piss. You know that's like, I say herb. Herb. Herbs like everyone else. But also, if you've not watched Jelly Isabella, our friend's TikTok on tulips, please do. Yeah, because that's what we're referring to right now. Because that's really hilarious. We have a two pence piece in the vase there, which makes them go whoop. Uh, it takes a few hours, to be fair, sometimes overnight. But they'll be upright and erect by the morning. Erect. That's, um very fitting for today's episode exactly however can i just quickly say that i like a drip tulip yeah they have a little bit of an effect but i think it's because they've got some other erect things with them that it maybe looks slightly odd but you know when we got the bunch together how it arrives they were truly beautiful by the way if and that turned up at your doorstep you'd be thrilled yeah i was like this is they're so unique and different mm. um and we're gonna have yeah some really nice seasonal flowers in here every single week so we will describe to you what they are. I thought it was a nice little touch. Quite like educational, I would say. I don't know anything about flowers. Same. And my nan would be proud because she loves her garden. Love that. We've also got um, a Spanish wall today that was a gift from our producers. Murray. He Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, if you remember from last week's episode, we said there was a box of cereal that I seen that was purple in the shops called The Best Cereal. This is The Best Cereal. And please re read out the claim. Yeah. So remember we said that this surely that has to have some sort of claim to it. Yeah. Quite clever. A star. Disclaimer. Apparently we have to make it clear. This is just our opinion and is not a proven fact. But give it time. Dot, dot, dot. I like that a lot. And I've been resisting trying it. So, by the way, 30 grams is only 100 cows. Although... I hate that on cereals. 30 grams is fuck all. That's about five bits of cereal. Fuck all. I would say you need at least 90 grams of cereal. Same. <laughs> There's a problem right Source there. Source of fibre, low in saturated fat. And apparently it's from the boys um, created by the side men. Apparently they're a big thing on YouTube. So, yeah. We're coming for you. Apparently. Apparently. KSI you get crew. You enough milk there? <laughs> I know, I know. So I can dribble. I know, but I just thought we really have trying one. a couple yeah. of bits, I suppose. Not. Do you want 90 grams on? <laughs> I wouldn't say no. Right, here we go. We have ASMR. Quite dark, isn't it? <laughs> no, we need milk with that. Right. Right, Mr. KSI, let's see if you're worth your millions, mate. Worth your weight in gold from the best food blogger in the world. It 
a very crunchy. Mm. The best or not? No, absolutely not. Can I just point out that I'm really good at sharing with you? You are. Because I don't really like sharing spoons and bottles and stuff like that, but I feel like it's just something that I've had to overcome. But I'm, I'm hoping you're going to say the same thing as me. The crunch is really nice, but... No, no flavour. Yeah, there's no sugar hit at the end. Mm -hmm. They obviously are um, low sugar, so there's only five grams of sugar in it, like barely any fat, barely any calories. But they haven't really marketed that on the front, though. So, oh, it just says low and saturated fat there. So, but you can tell, do you know what I mean? They taste like skinny cereal. Mm -hmm. But then it's not the best, but, it's, but I'd eat it. It's delicious. I would eat it. I do love a crunchy cereal, do you? Yep, and the chocolate's very subtle, but I quite like that. Mm. I couldn't have a bowl of Cocoa Pops in the morning, I don't think. Yeah, they're, they're nice. Bold claim, though, guys. You know, they've, they've got that much of a big ego that they're like, you know what, boys, let's just claim that they are the best in the world. Give a fuck what anyone says. All cereals about bland when you think about it, though. Have you seen the Kit Kat cereal? Yes. I'd like to try that as well. Same. Mm. Mm. Speaking of uh, chocolate, I tried the Options vegan hot chocolate and it was well nice. Bit of oat milk, hot water, 47 cows. I think you said, I said that to you, the same as the normal one. And it just tasted just as good. Do you, I don't put milk in mine. Do you not? No. I just like it to look a little bit creamier. No, I know. I think I would like... If I was out and about making one, but see, like, the options to me is, like, I'm being good. Yeah, so you just have the hot Having water. That, yeah. I also think I put cold, what, um, bleh, milk in it to cool it down so I can drink it. Mm. I, like, sip away to try and make it last longer, hoping it's a bad dairy milk instead, yeah. do you know what I mean? Um, I was saying to Zoe yesterday, I fucking hate this chat, honestly, so much. But I started to track food on my fitness pal. Again, I haven't done it for years and I've stressed on this podcast multiple times before that I personally hate doing it. I hate not depriving myself of food, but I just hate having to calculate what I'm putting into my body. It just removes the enjoyment for food for me so much. However, um, I am not either eating enough of the right food, enough protein and... I'm definitely overeating some days, so I'm trying to like dial it back in. And I think it's so important to do my fitness pal at some point in your life to have a good indication of what everything Absolutely, is. Yeah. But I'm not a believer that you should do it all the time, I think. Unless that's your thing, you're not really into food, then fine. But as a foodie, I, it is anyone that listening will know it's just the worst thing for you. Because you just like, oh, oil, fucking 200 calories. But I'm not having a, a, a salad without that gorgeous dressing. I'm not going to do it. No, that's miserable. Yeah, so. I think, as you said, it's more good for like education on like nutrition as in... Make sure you eat enough protein and... Yeah. I know it doesn't save vegetables, but you know what I mean? Good fats and all that sort of thing. It's more... If it's not just about the calories, it does the benefits. Yeah. But I do need to dial it in. I need to... I need to... All this fitness and stuff that I'm doing at the moment, I need to take good care of my body better. And just by doing that and visually seeing what I'm doing, it just makes me think a bit more. And whilst we're on that topic, we have a very exciting guest coming on next week. Next week. Which will be... That will answer all these questions in a professional manner. Yeah, Smith, I think that would be really helpful. I'm excited yeah. about that. Same. Um, so anyway, what's been a lot on your plate, Jessica? Which one do you want first? Physically, please. Okay, so um, I have been on my own since we last spoke because Rich has been away in Tenerife. So I've been cooking a lot for myself, which has been lovely. Um, I had quite a little bit of work on where I had to cook a lot of meals, so I've been mm. eating them. They're all coming soon to my Instagram and one in particular... Uh, I ate it again last night, it was so good. It's a fake away version of Wagamama's firecracker curry and gorgeous. I really liked that content. Did you? Yeah, I was quite impressed. Zoe obviously gets to see and approve all of my content before it goes to the, the big boys. The so, manager. Yeah, she has to let me know her thoughts. But did I speak about the lasagna I made last week? Because I definitely told the guys here about I'm it. I'm not sure actually if you did. Yeah, I made a veggie lasagna as well, which was incredible. So when all these come out, every single one that I made um, is amazing. So I'm looking forward to you guys seeing that. It'll be mid-April. Mid-April, yeah. Just you know. And all budget friendly. And then, um, so on Saturday, I went to the gym with my friend Rebecca, because that's who I'm doing high rocks with in three weeks in Berlin. And we 
went to Southside. She lives in Southside. And there's so many things on my restaurant hit list in my notes. I don't know if everyone has one of them, but I have one. Mm -hmm. And a lot were around Southside. And it's just somewhere where I don't really tend to go unless I went to Jack Baxter's salon. He's no longer there anymore. So I don't really venture that way much. I know. I feel like it is quite forgotten about unless you live there. Yeah. Or were brought up there. Agree. People just tend to go West End. Yeah. And actually, I would go as far as saying I prefer the South Side. South Side's got some amazing spots, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I went to, I started off the day by going to a place called 28. Oh, bear with me one second. Uh, restaurant hit list 287 and it's a bakery that um, is only open on Saturdays and Sundays and apparently they were one of the most original bakeries years ago and they've sort of reopened rebranded a husband and a wife really gorgeous pastries there I really recommend that then we went across to Burnfield Bakery which you love as well yeah, I went there the other day. Yeah, so good. I remember I got you that pastry that time yeah. for the podcast. I got just, um, what the fuck do you call it? A chocolate one? It's out of my brain. A pan au chocolat. Yeah, I got that the other day and it was thick bits of chocolate. Mm. Wasn't You know, it's sometimes it's just a drizzle and you're like, oh, boring. Not enough. Big, thick bits. Yum. Loved it. Do you know what chocolate they used in the croissant that I had? Bare bones chocolate. Have you ever had some of that? No, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a local chocolatier in uh, near, not far from the barriers, like near where Outlier Cafe is. Mm -hmm. I know where you are. Yeah. Anyway, so I went there, but I didn't have anything. I just looked in the, in the window, but it is definitely one of the best bakers if you've not tried it. Then we went across to Lo Lobo, L-O-B-O, and that is bang opposite. And we put our name down for a, a last minute reservation. It's a small plate Mediterranean style restaurant really really gorgeous we went there but before whilst we waited for our reservation we went across to luna which is a new cocktail bar um again quite hipster uh mixologists know their shit like it's proper cocktails mm. um, and they just launched their spring menu so we had one there really good doggy friendly so we had our reservation stuffed at this point as you can imagine but I said I want to do a food tour I know I'm thinking we're doing a food tour like before the reservation but I'm quite here for yeah, that but I but only had the croissant at this point right okay I never had anything at Burnfield I only had a cocktail so it was, at this point I had a croissant and a, and a cocktail small plates then went to um, where we spoke about last week where you Lad loved La Tassa or whatever it's called definitely worth the hype guys I'm quite disappointed you didn't get a hot chocolate I couldn't though. Zoe I genuinely was stuffed and I thought I really want a dessert and a dessert to me was an ice cream mm. but we'll that, go another time yeah I thought that I thought I can have that another time but I went for this honey roasted cashew nut ice cream gelato unreal guys that sounds so actually. different and I just the whole decor inside it is really nice isn't yeah it's it? cute isn't it and then there's loads of nice little shops there. Um, there's one called Bam, which is a vintage shop next door. And there's another one called Allure, I think. Also, we need to tell everyone that... Um, <gasps> yes! Pot, Potluck's coming back. Potluck is back. It's back. It's called Pot it's Belly. Back, it's called Pot Belly and it is at the old Sacred Tacos, in, again in Southside. So it's, it's no longer gone? Yeah. Um, and then another place on my list was Godshot Studio. I think you've wanted to go there before with yeah. me as well. They do really nice Japanese uh, bakes and matches. But we, I just couldn't... Oh, and macaron, macarons. Macarons? Macarons, I think I would say. But, they, um, but I, could, I physically couldn't put anything no, else into my body. No, we're full at this point. Also, can I just say I've never tried a matcha? I genuinely think you would think it tasted like earth. I like grass. But I've heard the Blank Street one is nice. Do you know, Zoe said um, to me the other day that the worst thing about me is the fact that I like bubble tea. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something about that that really bothers me and shock, no surprise. Right? Um, my troll will enjoy me moaning for this, but I just don't get... There's just something all right about that. It gives me, like something fake that's in movies like it just doesn't give me real yeah life. i know what you mean my little sister got me into it so that just says everything about it it's just weird but it genuinely the brown sugar bubble teas taste so good and there's one a place uh, in glasgow called cup c-u-p-p -P, and they do an amazing one and there's one on great buyers road at the bottom that does the most amazing biscoff brown sugar bubble tea 
Oh, with oat milk, so good. I, I, can't, I can't put it into words, but I can guarantee you a lot of people are going to message and say they agree. Oh, they will. It's the ick. I don't know if the ick's the right word. It's just a really young Gen Z thing, I think. Mm. Or a completely different culture that yeah, we're just not I used know. to. But it's it, just a strange concept to me. Yeah, but I do agree with you that on that. But when my sister made me try it, because I was like, eh, because she has the juicy ones, like I the th peach that's one. That's worse than like a coffee yeah. vibe, for sure. And I was like, no, Zara, I don't want to try it. And I was like, actually, that's well nice. Mm, interesting. Um, uh, and that's it, Zoe, to be honest with you. But I just thought whilst we were just quickly talking about the places that I went... Let's talk about a few new openings that we've spotted or we can shout about quickly. Go for it. Do you want me to start? Yep. Okay. So there is a taco truck in Dumbarton that everyone's shouting about on TikTok. Have you seen that? Yeah, we were going to go the other day, mind, yeah. but we chose a closer option. Where did we go in the end? Well, we were going oh. to Naked Soup and then oh. I crashed my car into someone. Fucking hell, so you did. Um, which was really fun. And everybody sat outside of Naked Soup, saw this happen. It was mortifying. And you only scratched it. I only scratched the car. Like, it's really not that dramatic. Um, but I'm yet to know how we're going about fixing this because the guy's not really confirmed yet. So and he's quoting a ridiculous price. quoted me £500 to fix the scratch, which I'm not paying. So that was really fun. So hairline we, scratch, can we say? Like, hairline. Yeah, you could probably fix it with a bit of boiling water, in my opinion. <laughs> Anyway, in his text, me, he did mention that it was like a BMW X1. Like, I know I saw it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, calm down. Anyway, so then we were a bit mortified to go into Naked Soup after the whole drama. Um, so we went to <gasps> Homemade. Yeah, well good. Well good. I had this French, the French dip where you dip it into the French onion gravy and mm. wow. Do you know there was like, like a check -in. seven thousand sticker taps on that homemade when I posted that because it looked that good. No wonder it was brilliant. I just had a chicken sort of chipotle, like slightly spicy one, and that was delicious as well. Yeah, I just find all that like mess. Like it was see quite if a I messy home, sandwich. I'd be like, Ugh. yeah, but in like a place you'd about like. You know, her man owns Frank's Pizza, and I've never tried that either. Does he? Yeah. Right, I've never tried She that. shared it on her story and I was like, oh my God, that looks so good. And she went, I'm biased, but it is the best. And I was like, wait. Ah. What's the connection? Yeah. Here? So anyway, another place that I thought we could talk about. So Dumbarton Taco Truck, I can't remember what it's actually called, but um, if anyone lives that way, you'll have heard about it. It's meant to be the, one of the best Mexican tacos ever. I've got Pot Belly on there. Um, we've got Henry's in Southside, another one I really want to try. Another pe a new pizza place that looks super cool called Caesar's Social. That's mm, just opened. I've not seen that. Yeah, it looks really cool. Now, in terms of other places, me and you went to somewhere really cool yesterday. Oh, we went to a new yoga class. Zen. Zen vibes. And I really enjoyed it. It's in um, Hamilton called House of Yoga. Yeah. So it's a wee local number. Yep. But I just feel like I used to be a bit funny about all that breathing nonsense, right? But I feel like I quite like that now. Yeah. You know when they say, like, really think about, like, your body, like, just take it all in and get rid of all those thoughts? I was like... I like it when we did that and she went, right, and put your finger to your thumb and lock in the energy. And for some reason in my head... I was locked in. I felt in. locked in. <laughs> did you? I was like, is this in my head or am I being I hypnotised? I was locked in, key thrown away. Yeah. But you know what? It wasn't even that. The stretches were not too repetitive. There were mm -hmm. deep stretches. We felt amazing. Enjoyable. Her voice was beautiful. I actually know Laura. We used to go to um, Fly Fitness together. And she, um, I didn't realise this until yesterday, but used to work at Hot Pod Yoga, which is definitely my favourite style of yoga. They kind of just cut to the chase. It's less of that um stuff the breathing's forced like i'm saying i like the breathing but as in i can't hear anyone else breathing because everyone's just taking deep breaths and exhaling yeah when people start like grunting and stuff that's too much for me remember like that's that, remember that angry dragon that i made that richard did yeah like that that's too much no nope. it's forced then <clears throat> another one our boxing guy who we go to every single wednesday without fail before we record this podcast Mark. this was week seven can i just say yep Seven weeks of consistency, unseen, unheard of from us. And it's there going to be go. called 90s. Yeah, the 90s words. theme. 
and it's very like 90s style boxing, spit and sawdust, even though it's not like that inside the gym, it's very boutique -y, brown leather bags, but retro, it's super cool. He's got such a nice vision for it, hasn't he? I would say like picture Rocky, but like yeah. in 2024, do you know what I mean? So basically me and Zoe have been having one-to-ones in the gym where it's going to be, but it hasn't been fully built. So he's now officially opening in April to do 90s, but classes. We haven't been to a class yet. We've only been paying for him just to have personal one -one. training. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's going to be classes which we can't wait for. We're going to join in hopefully on some of them as well. For sure. Um, another one is the Charlotte Tilbury store. Where, did I invite get lost in the post, darling? Charlotte, darling. Because Charlotte, darling. we've punted your flawless filter on this podcast for years. and I think that's actually shocking behaviour. Same. I just feel like we would be a real asset to that opening night. <laughs> Me we, we, we wear it every day. But... <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Fine. Do you know what? Fine. Buchanan Street. I'll get mine online. Yeah. From elsewhere. So that's not a bother. And last but not least, we're going to see it next week. We'll let you know our true reaction. But we've heard amazing things. There is a new social hub opening. It's called, sorry, The Social Hub. There's what, I think it's in Amsterdam, but this is the first one in the UK. And the guy that owns it yeah, is actually Scottish. Yeah, there's a few, I think. Yeah. Europe, we. San Sebastian, place that I really want to go to on holiday this year. So do you know? Why not, hey? But yeah, um, they have opened in Glasgow as well. So we'll let you know more on that. But really cool co-working spaces, office spaces. Um, so we're going to go and check it out for a potential little space to work once a week. And we'll let you know. Rooftop garden. Yeah, I think that would be really cool, actually. I'm quite excited to see that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry, Zoe. I've blabbed on quite a bit there, um, as always. There's nothing really been that... Um Worth to mention on my physical plate, to be honest. I went to Kapow, had the corn ribs. I just don't think they can be beaten. Amazing. I do think the caramel chicken is really nice as well, but the corn ribs are just a firm favourite for me. But the caramel chicken, they change it from breast to thigh, and it never was as good. No, it isn't. Yeah, right there. They also had it in wings format at one point as well, which was just a huge mistake. No. Anyway, I also have been cooking more. Like I, I, I feel like I'm overcoming... The, the big bad bridge of not enjoying cooking. Yeah, I do feel like you're cooking quite a bit recently. Same. Because it's because Jason's now a four day week, but until 8 pm every night, mm -hmm. Monday to Thursday. So I'm kind of dinner duty as much as I can be, which is fine. But I cooked for his family at the weekend. It was just spaghetti and meatballs, right? But I made like my own sauce and everything, which is quite good for me. And they thought it was really delicious. We also made your pizza pitas, which are coming yeah. soon. Yeah, but you didn't make the bread though. No, but who's making the bread? Zoe, it's literally Greek yogurt and flour. Oh, who can we fuck? Not me, right? So it's one not my Greek pitters, but you got inspo from it. One step at a time. Mm -hmm. We just bought pitters and put fucking tomato puree on it. on it and put it <laughs> in cheese and put it in air fry, right? That's, but, that's a great late night snack if you're like... Yep, and hungover. it's also a great quick meal. Like, see if you've got nothing in. We've always got pitters in the freezer because Jason eats them quite a lot. Sorted. I try to think what else I've made. Made you a salad not. yesterday. You did make me a salad, actually. Anyway, nothing else has really been on my plate. What I've been up to is, at the weekend, I went to see my wee sister's dancing show. And I need to discuss this in depth. So my wee sister goes to dance college, and this is her graduating this year. She wants to be on the cruise ships and that, so if anyone can she? help us out, hit me up, right? She's good. Anyway, she's like living the dream that I had that didn't do, do you know what I mean? So she is really good at dancing, by the way. She is a good dancer. Anyway, I went to see that with my gran and Ruby's other gran. And um, I just can't cope with the three-year-olds because they do musical theatre at this place as well. So it's like all the singing and acting and all that. I can't cope with the three-year-olds being like... <laughs> like singing with attitudes. Yeah. And like they're singing like quite adult songs. If you're not looking at... If you're listening to a Zoe's... Got her hands out aggressively, wafting them in front of her face. But you know, like when someone goes like, like oh no, on, you didn't type vibes yeah. like that. And that was just making me really die. <laughs> what, they're doing that on stage? On stage. And I was just like, right, you are good because you've got like personality. Like, I used to dance, act and sing with a face like thunder. Again, no shock, right? But, <laughs> and that I wouldn't have succeeded in that line of work because of that. However, there's just a fine line, I would say. And I think it's when it's the age, it just makes me 
go into a dark hole and want to stay there. Yeah. But also what I really loved about it is there was quite a few boys involved. Love now, that. Like, good fucking on you, son, right? Mm. And a few times they had the boy in like a different sort of costume thing and then they got him to do like a wee bit on his own and everyone pure cheered him and it, honestly he must have been three years old oh and he had a wee like soldier's uniform on Aww. that was really cute so where was the dance show um theater royal oh so proper, in glasgow so quite a proper one then yeah it was she does do them quite proper like it is like a proper dance like musical theater school thing oh. um but anyway, I just had to discuss that because I want to know if anyone's kids go to dancing and have to do... And they're a bit like, And they're yeah. under five, can I get a video of them, please, dancing? Yeah, but listen, funny. I feel like if I was watching kids on stage, I like that personality out there attitude because you're obviously watching them more than the other ones in the corner. No, I know, like, that's what I mean. Like, there is something good about it, but I think it's more when it almost feels well above their age. Yeah. I'm kind of like, oh no, like... But they're told to dance like that, aren't they? No, I know. Yeah. It's not their fault. Yeah. But I was just laughing at, like, the attitude some of them have. <laughs> but I'd, at the same time, I think, if you actually go down this route as, like, a career or whatever, you will do well because you're not scared to... Yeah. ...have that. Whereas I was just so... Like, I'll be honest, I was a pretty good dancer. But I would never have... I would never have gone where I would want to go because I just don't have the... You didn't want to be centre of attention. I don't have the facial expressions or anything like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, there are people that are just really good when they're just mouthing stuff because I'm obsessed with watching those um, videos of dance schools in, in London where mm -hmm. they all just like freelance together is it what's it called where they just freestyle sorry not freelance freestyle yeah. together and then everyone's like in the side like woo cheer them just, on you don't even need to be you don't need to be pure smiling the whole time but it's more just almost like feeling the music and i just didn't have that part in me so like hip-hop music no it's a mix like tap ballet everything, oh. everything. but it's just kind of like having that motion of like lifting your eyes at the right time and all that and i was just about I'd love to be able to dance, you know, like diversity in that on X Factor. Mm. I think going to one of their like dance school schools. I was better saying. at like tap like modern stuff, stuff, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Anyway, we digressed quite a lot there. Should we get into the topic? Yeah, of baby. Se sexy, sexy times. Yes. Right, let me get all these. We've not read the messages, by the way, again. Because we like to give you our live reaction. Someone just wrote into the Patreon chat there. A day late listening to the pod, but we have fritters in Manchester, but we just call them scallops instead, not to be confused with the fishy type. And now I'm absolutely starving and want a chippy at 11am. I didn't know that. We definitely don't have them where, down where I live. Unless yeah, I want a chippy. I'd love a chippy right now. A chippy is good, isn't it? Right, anyway, let's get crack a lacking. Right, I'll start it off. Here we go. I don't know if my first time was my first time. Dot, dot, dot. How is such a thing possible? Anyway, so I was on holiday, pissed as a fart and ended up in the toilet with the PR guy from the bar I was drinking in. Oh yeah. Things were getting saucy and everything was a bit bloody, but I do remember him whipping out what can only be described as one of those wee blue pens you get from the bookies, length and width. Like a bingo I, pen. I like, you know, the wee, tight, wee lottery pen? Yeah. The tiny skinny one. And thinking, what the fuck is that? Bearing in mind this was the first penis encounter I had, so nothing to compare, but knew this was not normal, but thought, fuck it, it's what it is, so carried out and enjoyed myself best I could. Then five minutes later, his trousers are back on and he's like, I need to get back to work. I'm so confused what you're talking, this is actually quite revolting. But moral of the story is, did the bookie pen actually enter my vagina or was it just his skinny wee fingers? Because I honestly couldn't have felt the difference. No, Zoe, I don't like that story, that's actually vile. It's not actually a bookie pen. So he didn't actually whip anything no, out. What she's saying is his willy was like that. Oh, sorry. I thought you really, meant he got a pen out. Really small and skinny. Ew. Ew. For info, I'm not. Cla I'm definitely not class, and this is my first time. Oh, void. <laughs> that was your first time, honey. Like. I feel like without giving too much away of like past experience or anything, I've never really been like, whoa, at the willy. Mm. Either way. Mm. And I'm quite thankful for that because I just would really quite struggle to continue the experience. <laughs> <laughs> Again, either way. Ooh. Anyway, moving on. 
Willies. <laughs> I'm all for a bit of spanking, but I was shagging this Italian guy in holiday and he started slapping my face. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think that's all okay. I think that's quite a concern. Right. One time I went a drive, and this is in... I'm doing those speech mark things with okay. my hands. With a Tinder date and ended up in a dogging spot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I didn't know that's where he'd taken us. So we started getting down to business and the car steamed up and cars started beeping and flashing their lights to us. I said to the guy, I think they're trying to tell us something. Eventually, I see the police driving up and not in the not so far away distance and the guy was telling me it wasn't them. I quickly shoved my clothes back on and so did he. About a minute later, we got a knock on the window and said, police, ask us what we are doing. All the other cars had driven away by this point. The guy said we were looking at the view as it was like a car park in the sky scenario and the police said, oh really? As you couldn't see anything from the steam. <laughs> I was mortified. <laughs> then the police said, is that weed we can smell? And asked us to stand outside while they searched this guy and his car. I didn't know if he was dealing it or what what as it was only my third time meeting him and first time in his car as the police searched him and the car they must have seen how fucking raging I was for my face because one of them came over to me and said don't worry I don't need to ask what your job is as he took my details I'm a secondary teacher so thank fuck or I would have died safe to say I never met this guy again or ever messed about in, in a car again after that lucky escape this happened when I was about 24 so this guy was a weed dealer and so also shagged in his car so did he get caught with all the weed in it if they could smell it? How could Sounds she not like smell it, it by it the way. Sounds like No. It. That's a good job um, <clears throat> that she was visibly fuming as well because they could have been in a really bad mood with her and be like, right, what's your job? And ruined everything for her. I know, because see, really, if you're involved in the situation, like I think it depends if the police are arseholes or not. Yeah. And, involve, and continue to involve you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right, anyway, next up. It's quite a long one. Right. First of all, she said, I actually can't believe I'm going to share this, but SOS. <laughs> so strap in. So my husband and I were on our honeymoon in Florida Keys. We actually got married over there and spent the month there travelling around the state. We finished off our last couple of nights in Key West, southernmost point of the US. Mm -hmm. Never heard of it. As we drove to our hotel, my husband and I said to each other, you know, we haven't really got steam in the whole time we've been here. So we checked it and dumped our suitcases <clears throat> and headed to the nearest place for margaritas. Side note, I took like $250 out of a cash machine for the last couple of days and put it in my purse. This must be connected. We skipped dinner and just bar hopped from 3pm until midnight. I was so, so My blackout God. drunk and fast forward we woke up in our hotel room. It was like something from the hangover. All around our hotel room were dildos, butt plugs, <laughs> anal beads, vibrators and sexy underwear. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck have these all come from? I checked my purse and see my $250 is still there. If it's still there and it's gone. Have they paid for someone to come? I said to my husband, fuck, we've been robbed. And he was like, surely not. Then I find two receipts in my purse. Wait for it. From a sex shop for $1,000, <laughs> which is like £900. £900 of fucking sex toys made up of $250 cash payment, $350 on MasterCard and $400 on my Amex. I bought the same sexy lacy outfit seven times in different <laughs> colours. <laughs> Our hotel room was like something out of a porno. I could not believe I'd blacked out drunk, spent this in a sex shop. We started to get flashbacks the rest of the day and I remember my husband passing out and too drunk to have sex. So here I am, opened every single toy and went to town with them. <laughs> Safe to say, going to the airport, flying home, I had the total fear. I had so many toys stuffed in my bag. Say, how did she get that back? And then she sent, a, she sent us a receipt of them all. No, she's not. One's called embroidered, one's two-pack baby doll, one's anal beads, one's body kisses, super slim, bubble butt, Let me pu see. purity blush, floral lace, candy shop. <laughs> oh. Oh. And the time, 12 a.m. That's brilliant, seconds. by the way. I would have loved to have seen the cashier Joy's face. Commit the black yes commission. Yeah. 
See, on a night like that, that's when I wish it, we lived in the Truman Show and everyone was getting these things on camera. Yeah. Oh, when you have to piece together a night out after, it's, it's just good, the flashbacks it? are hellish. Do you know what um, I think there's part of it when it's with, like, your best pal or with, like, your boyfriend or whatever, it almost gets you worse a wee bit. Mm -hmm. Because I'm kind of like, was I being so bad in front of you? Who yeah. will remind me of that forever? Yeah. Whereas other people will just forget because they don't really care about you. Uh huh. <laughs> Fucking hell. Here's one. Small one. Not my story, but my friend was pumping her boyfriend in the spare room of her parents' house. In a wild, very naked position. When they realised they were... <laughs> They were pumping in front of the baby camera monitor. <laughs> Actually, imagine! No. I would die. I've said it before, I just couldn't go on after something like that happened to me. Never. I'd find it difficult. <sighs> oh, right. <laughs> you just opened that one there. Yeah. Hey, let me read it. Right, go for it. Uh, oh. I only saw the first part. <laughs> It used to be common practice. <laughs> it used to be common practice that when me and my ex would have sex, I'd do a massive queef afterwards for good measure. <laughs> One day we did the deed, then I had to head out in a rush, so my standard procedure queef didn't get a chance to make an exit. <laughs> He lived with his parents, so after quickly dressing, we were saying bye to his... No, we were saying bye to his dad, who was downstairs. I then let out... An <laughs> no. no. I, then let, I then let out an almighty queef, which I can only assume... I can only assume his dad thought was a massive fart. There was no TV on, no background music, nothing to cover the sound of air exiting my flaps. <laughs> Is that just is that just continue to stare at me? Most embarrassing moment of my life. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's the best one yet, by the way. Oh, just the way she's worded that is flipping All iconic. All I can say is <laughs> at least it's quite similar to a fart. Yeah. Sort of noise. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's not really like smelly like a fart either. It's just it's just air. I'd still collapse to the ground. I would collapse dead, especially because he thought it was a fart. Like, what's worse? Imagine as well, having sex and you're always you're both just waiting for her to queef. I know, is that kind of like tech good job sort of practice here? I just cannot. That, I wouldn't want to do that. That gives me farting energy. <laughs> no, same. Right. Anyway, next up, lesbian version of a sex story. Yes. Here we go. You'll like this. Me and my ex-girlfriend at the early stages of our relationship were chilling in my room with my parents. My mum shouts up that her and my dad were going out for a bit and we'd be back in a while. She asked me a favour to watch the ham joint that was boiling away downstairs for her dinner. <laughs> I agreed and topped up the ham with some water to keep it going. Meanwhile, I go back upstairs and me and my girlfriend get to making out, etc. One thing leads to another and I'm going down on her. Things are going well, then I notice she's been a bit off. I stop and ask if she's okay. She agrees, so I continue. But then she starts sniffing and says, can you smell burning? Obviously I cannot, but then I suddenly remembered about the fucking ham joint I'm meant to be ham sitting. <laughs> no, the ham sitting's got me. <laughs> ham sitting. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Best part of the story. Um, oh, fucking hell, I've lost my place. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? I'm getting tense because of all the sex chat with the lesbians. I jump up absolutely naked, swing open my door and it's just smoke. I run through the smoke. At this point, the fire alarm starts to go off. I run downstairs, turn off said burnt ham, get a chair and a dish, a dish towel. I'm up on the chair and the absolute scud waffing this towel at the fire alarm. My girlfriend comes downstairs in clothes, unlike me, still naked. I'm still waffing. Everything out to sea. Bare arse. Tits flying everywhere. Panicking on this chair. Praying for the ham. <laughs> Finally, alarm goes off. We check the ham. It's bad. My girlfriend makes it her task whilst I put on clothes to cut all of the burnt bits off and said it would be fine. We put it back in the pot. It's looking better. We hope for the best. Mum and Dad come home. We speak no word. End result. We had a lovely ham dinner. Mum said it was the nicest ham she's ever had. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> the ham sitting. The ham sitting. Oh, oh. the tale of ham sitting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, God. Right. My pal that I lived with when studying in Aberdeen was seeing this guy, hot and all that. We all fancied him. Anyway, slept with him, and when he was finished, when he was finishing, he finished on her belly and then licked it all the way up. So, so like on purpose, he licked his own cum from the bottom of her stomach to the top. So she told us, and we were like, what the fuck? Maybe he was extremely drunk and thought he, it was hers, blah, blah, blah. So she slept with him again, and he did the exact same thing absolutely barking obviously like the taste of himself and that was the last of him that is honestly vile why would you stuff like that makes me actually shiver i need to understand the benefits <laughs> of that <laughs> right i went to my boyfriend's for dinner one night we were making chili together he was on chili chopping duty. We had some time to kill whilst we were waiting on everything cooking and also in the early stages of a relationship. So obviously we passed time in the bedroom where things got pretty spicy, in capitals, literally. He had obviously not managed to completely get rid of the chili from his hands and I somehow ended up with a very tingly vag. I'll be honest, wasn't the worst thing to start off with, but quickly progressed into what felt like a full-blown forest fire in my <laughs> nether regions. I tried everything but it only seemed to get worse so I ended up having to sit with peas on my vagina all night and too traumatised to eat the chilli no frozen peas in the vagina we've had a few cooking disasters the garlic trusses was the same where they dropped it on the toes love that I oh. once had sex with a fireman and he kept putting at me like a cat I met him at a Pilates class so says it all really oh my fucking god Um, weird one <laughs> Weird one night stand, he stopped for a fag. <laughs> I mean, how long are you going for that he needs a fag break? That's what I need to know. Right, hubby going down to me, I'm about to come, tell him harder. I find it hard saying things like this. But he's also playing with my nips. So he actually pulls harder on my nips and my milk squirts all over the place. <laughs> She's got in brackets, I'm breastfeeding. <gasps> oh my God. My ex-partner had never had a wee... <laughs> we. My ex-partner had never had a wee finger up his bum. <laughs> when he allowed it once, and as I was giving him a blowjob at the same time, he... F <laughs> he farted. He was absolutely howling and I spewed. <laughs> And I spewed all over his dick. Oh, fuck it out. And him. Safe to say we were no longer a couple. For other reasons, though. Lol. I was going to say, fuck that. It's a shame. <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Oh, guys. Any nurse had a patient who was on a weekend away with boyfriend and wanted to be adventurous. Bought an egg. Which got lost. An egg? An egg, again, is in speech marks. Came in for retrieval of said egg. Mm -hmm. The egg's obviously been placed into some mm -hmm. below passage. Mm -hmm. Halfway through examination, it switched on. And I had to go to the waiting room to get the remote from the boyfriend who just wanted to know if it would work through the wall. <laughs> Hell. That is why boys are idiots. Yeah. You're playing my remote control fucking sex toy and your girlfriend's in the room getting it removed from our vagina <laughs> and you're turning it on. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Honestly, guys, if you haven't listened to our episode with Amelia, it was season one. God, it must have been like episode four. Very early days. Dominatrix. It is so interesting about men and fetishes and the things that she's done for men mm -hmm. like she's poured baked beans over her and people are noshing themselves off over it like someone was obsessed with levi jeans endless stories so bizarre i personally don't think i would be able to join in on a strange fetish no i wouldn't be able to take it in my stride and it depends what it is 
totally depends on what it is. I couldn't even have someone like suck on my toe though. Like even just quite common mm. ones that. I'm... I think we spoke about this in the one of the first or second sex ones, but Richard's openly admitted to him because I like asking these questions. I'm like, is there any weird things? He's like, no, but if I watch porn, I, I would quite. I'm quite partial to milf porn. <laughs> <laughs> and I think fair fox lad like that's fine I watch lesbian porn it is what it is like I'm not a MILF I will be one day but what gives me comfort in that is knowing that one day he might be more attracted to me as I'm getting older yeah but, but I'm just remaining youthful Murray <laughs> I just think people are really strange but it keeps the world exciting do you know what I mean Listen, the world would be a boring place if we all like the same thing. And you are bizarrely fascinated with Fifty Shades of Grey. I am. Um, actually, you're right. And I think you like the fact, you say it's not the sexual part. It's not. But I disagree. You like him being controlling. I, I do, but not even just in the sexual parts. Yeah. I like how he literally controls her life like i know this sounds like a materialistic thing but see like he literally removes her car from her life and gives gives her a new one yeah obviously it adds quite big things in that film but like i just like how he does that arrives pick her up in a fucking helicopter yeah but it's not it's not the fancy part of that that appeals to me still it's just the dominance of him mm. but at the same time in real life i wouldn't want someone controlling me like that but when it's in a romantic way I'm here for it. I just love him as well, though. I would watch those films every day. Like, it's so funny. Richard had been away um, for a week and he came home last night. <laughs> I just don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so... I really enjoy being on my own. Mm -hmm. And he came home and he walked into the kitchen and he went, do you want a cup of tea? And it just fucked me off. Don't come into my house and tell me what you want to do in my house. Like, and I looked at him and went, don't, my you house. don't you start thinking you're bossing me around in this house. And he, we were pissing ourselves, but why did that annoy me? Why are you asking me to make a tea in my house for me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, get out. And as soon as he's in, he's on the, he's watching flipping his podcast on the TV. And I was sitting there raging, <laughs> boiling like the, like it's being taken over now. I hate it. <laughs> And then he's in bed and he's cuddling me and I'm like, get off. But that's weird. Like, I, I'll be fine tonight. But having a good, like, seven days alone, oh, I flipping love it, guys. I know, but we were talking about how, like, you were really productive when you're in on your own. So you maybe yeah. just felt you were on, like, a good run of being yeah. productive. Like, a wee routine that's just you. And then he's came back when you're almost in the high of that. And he came back and at half eight. Down. And he's like, oh, babe, like, what's for dinner? Fuck off! Get your own, get some on the plane! Idiot. <laughs> and he's so loving it. Like, he was so excited to see me as well. I was just going like, to say, he was doing buzzing to get he home He was so you. buzzing. He couldn't wait to get, oh, he's cute. But I was just like, why do I feel this way? Like, I love seeing him, but don't, <laughs> come, don't come into my flat. <laughs> that we pay half mortgage yeah. on, by the way. My flat. <laughs> that you keep clean all the other time <laughs> that we're together. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, but talking of like controlling, like I feel like if he ever tried to tell me what to do, out. No, and I agree. That's the weird thing about it. Yeah. But equally, Zoe, I love it when a man takes control. He's really good like this. He's like, I book something for us next week. We're going on a date. Yeah. He can't keep a secret, mind you, and that pisses me off. Sometimes I just wish he'd be like, oh, I've booked somewhere. Turn up, I'll take you. But it's always like, I've booked this place. I might just keep, I've got... I've got you a present, but it arrives next week. Don't tell me. Just let Jason it arrive. Does that as well. Just let it come. And it's so lovely, and I'm I'm extremely grateful. But I am just like, can you just let it just turn up? Mm, but it's so cute that you just you can't wait to say, "Ouch!" I feel mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I just think you've got your what you like when it's not your life. Like Fifty Shades of Grey for me, but I wouldn't, I couldn't cope with someone controlling me like that in real life. You but know, if you wanted to turn up by helicopter and take me to New York, or whatever, then I will get on the helicopter, of course. But don't like take away my freedom, you know. You're reading a bit of a, a love novel at the moment. How is it so far? It ends with us. 
Yeah, I'm really enjoying that actually. Are I you? About that. I was wondering what your thoughts would be would, on this. I'm on about page like a hundred odd, so I'm probably like one third in. Oh wow! I read quite a bit the other night because um, I got to a point that I was like, I need to read more. So I don't know if I want to say anything about it in case someone's not read it. Uh, well. yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind reading it one day if it's an easy read. But yeah, definitely read it because <coughs> I would say it's kind of got not. I don't know enough about it to say Fifty Shades of Grey kind of vibes, but right now I'm assuming it's going that way. Ah, uh, and the, that Court of Thorns book that I've been... Is that not meant to be sexual? Yeah, I've heard it's like fairies. I, I've re seen this on TikTok, right, that it's about fairies and fantasy. I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, that are quite sexual. It's a very sexual, intense book. And people have been saying on TikTok that it's created this whole inner spark in them that they actually are like having sex like rabbits with their partner and people because they are just so fired up get that, you by this that book. Out. I'm going to be reading that tonight. Get in, baby! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you like, you all right? <laughs> oh, mission me tonight then, babe, no? <laughs> Queefing all over the place. Oh, it's too much. <laughs> oh, I hate myself. Um, yeah, so anyone needs a little bit of zump. I watch Fifty Shades of Grey. I reach, read that book. Get yourself a love, honey. But what's weird is I don't watch that. It doesn't. I'm not getting excited watching that. What? Fifty Shades of Grey. I think I just no. look at it in a different way now. <laughs> no. It's like a comfort film, even though he's fucking whipping the shit out her. <laughs> quite bizarre I just feel like they were both cast very bizarrely especially her but I think now I know who they are I can't see past either of them but I just find it really strange that she was cast as that um what's her name again uh a new life no what yeah what's her name in the ca the character is it not Anna something like that something yeah like that. anyway don't know I paid don't pay much attention to her <laughs> Jamie Do Dornan. Jamie Dornan. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, I know. Um, oh, before I forget, I had my second round of Morpheus 8 last week with Zara at Skin Aesthetics. Um, it is, if anyone doesn't know, it's micro needling and radio, red light radio frequency. It's basically the same as Secret RF, which you have with Laura Porter. Mm -hmm. But it, Morpheus 8 is just the brand name, as is Secret RF, I believe. I think Morpheus is a little bit more um, I don't high. I think that's what I had. <clears throat> did you not have Secret RF, did you not? No. The little grid marks. laser. Oh. I think it's quite similar vibes, though. Yeah. Unsure. But basically, with Morpheus, it's got the it's like gold-plated needles. Um so every time they change the needle head, that's why it's so expensive to have the treatment. Um, this time round was far less painful. I left the numbing cream on for a good 40 minutes. Um, and I had, well, about a week downtime. I've still got quite a rough neck feeling. Um, and I broke out quite a bit around here, which I, th I read that is, because uh, it's going quite deep into the skin. Purging. Yeah, but it, it's good for, um, what it's good for is, acne scarring, pigmentation, and tightening of the skin. I don't personally feel like I really need any more of a large chin. <laughs> so I'm quite conscious that I might not go for my third appointment. I don't want to also have any fat dissolving. I feel like when you remove like fat from your face or whatever. It's just going to, everything points more, doesn't it? Well, it, it ages you. Fat in face is good, keeps you youthful. And I didn't really realise that was a part of it. I just did it more for the acne scarring and my pigmentation and just a bit more of like a eek. Yeah, you want to be plump. Stuff. It's not a filler or anything. It's just basically, it's just damaging the surface of the skin and then it's just re-healing. So I've been taking, I've been upping my collagen and just making sure that I'm zooming back in. So I'll give you the true results. I've heard it takes a good couple of months to actually see any visible signs of mm -hmm. a difference and if it's worth, because it is an investment and it's expensive and I think it's more catered to uh, mature skin. So... Yeah, I'll let you know on that one. But I'll go to Zara. She's amazing. She's the first person I ever had um, baby Botox with when I was 31. And I had Profound with her, Neofound. I had my first Botox with her as well. You did, didn't you? And she's I think just, I was about 18. She looks gorgeous. You weren't 18. No, I was 20. Um, she's 
a nurse, she's amazing, as well as this Fiona who we had on the podcast. Definitely research who you go to if you go to an esthetician. But yeah, I highly recommend both of those gorgeous ladies. And Zara is also who I get my Zio Zo skincare from, which I've had for years and years. Can he beat it? You can he beat it? You can he beat that exfoliating cleanser? It is the best cleanser in the whole entire world. I've got the big man Jason on it as well now. Have you? Mm-hmm. He's fancy pants with skincare. The only thing is it's expensive, but for me personally, it lasts, it lasts ages. We were, we ended up, because I got him to try it when I had mine, so we were like sharing one, and it still lasted months. You need like the tiniest pea size tiny drop, pea don't you? Size. Mm -hmm. Lathers up beautiful, smells good. I'm yeah. telling you, you can beat it. Nothing beats that B5 La Roche-Posay moisturiser for me, though. That's all I use. I only use a cleanser and a moisturiser now. You've been using a red light back. mask. You've been a bit shit with it. I've not done it in a while. I did it a couple of nights last week, but I need to be more consistent with that. And also, do you know what it? Do you know what it is? It sounds so pathetic and sad, but I really struggle to sit there and lie for ten minutes doing nothing while I'm wide awake. No, I agree with you. Except if I'm doing yoga, like I can't just lay there like in a red. I would need to be watching something. I can't, I can't really keep something. my eyes open. Yeah, that's what I mean. Even when I tried to take a selfie one time with it on, I couldn't really... Open your eyes. Yeah, it was about bright. But I, I, the results are amazing with it. Mm, um, yeah, I need to get back on that. Yeah. Are you watching anything on TV? You watched something the other day. I've watched loads of things. I finished a series The Gentleman. Yeah. Which was really good. I would recommend watching that. I watched um, the new film Roadhouse. Thing? Well, it's actually a remake of an old film. Right. Um, but I will be honest, Conor McGregor ruined it for me. I think he's an arrogant prick, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> and it didn't really work because he was all like massive tattoos, and whatever he's got, like tanned with the big veneers. Like it didn't really work with the film. Yeah. Because Jake Gyllenhaal was the main guy in it. He's. Is it based in. Um... Oh no, I'm thinking of Kin. That's Ireland, isn't it? No, this is America. Uh... Um, and he's a bit like rough and ready. Jake Gyllenhaal, I would say. And it just kind of made him a bit like, eh. Yeah. Just, he ruined it for me. So I might watch the original of that and see what that's like. I also watched, watching quite a lot of TV at yeah. the moment. I also watched um, the new Zac Efron one, not the wrestling one. Mm -hmm. Another one, Ricky McNicky or something it's called, Ricky McSticky or something. Mm -hmm. And basically him and his two pals when were younger caused a fire at house and made up that it was this boy that's done it mm -hmm. and then it's like a fake friend that they've had through their whole life but now they're like in their 30s adults kids and all that yeah and obviously everyone's starting to be like how come he's never at any weddings how come he's this so then they hire someone yeah to pretend he's the friend right daft film but an easy watch okay and zach efron you, you watch it wouldn't you it's got um what do you call him in it wrestler guy john cena john cena <laughs> Have you seen it, Manny? Uh, no, but I have seen Roadhouse and I thought it was excellent. Did yeah. you like Conor McGregor in it? Yes, he was over the top and ridiculous, which is exactly what his character was supposed to be. Ah, oh, okay, so... He was chewing scenery like anyone. It was really good. So, maybe in that sense, seen that then, Have you seen yeah. the original one as well? I watched it the other night, yeah. Right, so maybe... Yeah, I so maybe he was cast well then. Was quite... But maybe they envisioned who that character would be and were like, Conor McGregor is that person. No, I know. I just don't, I think he's unlikable. Yeah, because you already have that connection with him I know. personally, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Who he truly is. <laughs> personally. Personally, you I know, know, you know him. Back in the days, you know what I mean? I actually haven't been watching anything, but I've been listening to a few really amazing podcasts. Um, <laughs> she can't think of one now, she said it. Um, I listened to... Olivia Atwood. Olivia Atwood. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can speak on that in a second. I also listened to the one with Call Her Daddy with Megan Fox. I'm in the middle of that at the moment. Guys, I genuinely <clears throat> have never listened to a more interesting, unapologetically herself woman who is so intelligent, but yet she's extremely sexualized by society. Also... I think she's definitely enjoyed that character as well, whatever, because she is an extremely hot woman. But there's so much more to her, and I really recommend that you listen to her because listen to that episode because it was honestly amazing. She made such a fabulous quote about the fact that she got so much hate in the press when she had a bit of blood of Machine Gun Kelly around her neck. Mm -hmm. 
and she said that she drank his blood and people think that she's like uh, Satan and she's all about the, what's that flipping cult that everyone's in in, in America. I know what you're talking about because I heard that bit as well. Yeah, and she's basically sat there and she's like, well, but you guys all sit and there's so many women that will go and shag a random guy basically and let him come in your mouth and you're basically drinking his a random guy's cum but i just had a drop of blood from my soulmate like what's the fucking difference and i'm like that is actually so true but then she was like i don't act, we don't actually sit and eat drink each other's blood it was like a one thing time thing that people just yeah caught on to and she was and i just let them think it because why not yeah why not um listen to olivia atwood i listened to one um uh the calvert the calvert sisters if anyone doesn't know who they are they're quite big into um sport um one of them was really crossfitty and the other one just played football for england literally everything but they now are part of march on which is a big huge fitness sort of organization and they were on his podcast called Without Limits and they were, again, really inspirational. Um, I listened to the podcast from the guy that started Represent. That was really interesting. I can't remember his name now. It's two brothers, but that was a really cool story. Um, but Olivia Atwood, there was one comment that she made and they were talking about self-love and I thought it was really good to share with you guys because me and Zoe have been having a back and forth about loads of things recently, haven't we? We've been having a lot of deep chats about life in general, haven't we? Quite a lot of deep chats, I would say. Like... The fact that we're only on this earth once and we just go right deep into it, don't mm. we? And just how we feel about ourselves. Um, but there was a story of a girl that I follow called Natalie Chassis on Instagram. And she was talking about a time where she was on Instagram and she saw a flashback picture of her at the gym about four years ago. And she took herself, it flashed up on her iPhone like they do when they come up. Mm -hmm. And she looked at it and she was like, Jesus, I look so good in that picture. And then she clicked on it and she's like, I actually remember how I felt in that picture. And I felt so fat and ugly and revolting. And I was so hateful to myself. But I could only wish that I would look like that now. Mm. And she was just, and I thought that is so interesting. There's so many times where I look back at pictures of me and I've been like, oh, I felt so uncomfortable in that bikini, but I genuinely look amazing. I know. And you will never, as women especially, I, I don't know we're really hard on ourselves, but we are never, ever going to be happy. And never. just with like things recently and friends like suddenly passing, there's so much more to life. And I, and I know the guys here always take the mick out of us that we're hard on ourselves. And I know it's hard to really change that mindset, but it does make you think like, Jesus fucking Christ, what is this all for? Like what? And I'll get over it. And then going back to Olivia Atwood, they were talking about self-love, her and what was the guy called? Paul something is the guy who does Slabs Go Dating and I think he did Married at First Sight as well. That's right. Really American nice guy. guy. Yeah. And they're quite close and they were talking about self-love and how it's all thrown about so well but and people say, oh, just love yourself. All right, how though? How do you love yourself? Mm -hmm. And this is another reason why I thought I would start tracking my calories a bit more and stuff was because she said this quote and it was, it's really difficult to hate something that you that you care for. And that is so true. It, I, just, I don't know, it just hit me. I thought that is, I can't, you can't really hate yourself if you're caring for it, you're sleeping better, you're doing like a nice wellness routine, you're putting really good food into mm -hmm. your body. You're not binge eating all the time, eating shit that makes you feel like shit, <clears throat> drinking tons of alcohol, like I've had a whole week hangover last week, not sleeping much, not working out, getting fresh air. You're not caring for yourself, so you are more likely to be hateful to, to yourself. Yeah. And I thought that is just so goddamn true. Makes so much sense. Yeah. And I'm and I'm not saying that when you do the all these things, you're still not going to be self-critical. That's not what I'm saying because I've been in that position where I've worked out so much and ate amazing and I'm still never happy. But I was less, less hateful to things. Do you know people. what I mean? No, not people. I mean myself, <laughs> like parts of my body or whatnot. I am actually not that self-critical, to be fair. I, I still try and continue to tell myself I'm gorgeous and everyone around me. Oh, yeah, you're you're nothing compared to me. No, but you're not <laughs> hate. Well, sometimes you have been um, recently, yeah. Um, quite, I see every day. Um, but I think that's a very valid point. But even when it comes to, like, if you're not that into fitness or nutrition or whatever, it's even, like, see when you take that time to do your skincare or your... Everyone feels better when you put tan on, don't they? Yeah. Things like that. Mind I said in the first or second season, I believe, something about making more of an effort just with my appearance in general, no matter what I was doing, and it made me feel so much better, yeah. things like that. If you're looking after yourself, you you like yourself more. And me and Zoe say today, like, um, 
this is really the only day of the week where we actually do make an effort <laughs> and get dressed and put makeup on. And I was moaning about it. We were. It's one day out of seven. But what I said to her was that we both have such a productive day after here. Mm -hmm. I go home, I'm more likely to film some more content because I'm ready, I'm dressed, I don't mind being in front of the camera. I go and meet people. Uh, we, we've got a meeting after here. Yeah. And it's not a... You turn up, first impressions, you feel great, you act better, you show up. Well, I feel awake because I've actually been out, exercise, got ready, yeah. whatever. Other days I'm like in joggies and stuff all day, not a scratch of makeup, not nothing. Well, that is why we're going to... um hopefully look at getting a potential office space next week so we can both be better because I know you guys have been on this journey of self-employment with us but it is hard trying to motivate yourself it is indeed um, but I do think we are getting better at it we are this year has been progress after progress I would say but I thought I would share that nice wise uplifting knowledge because it definitely helped me this week love to hear it yeah Right, anyway, better fuck off and go paint um, willies and vaginas. So if you want to catch us doing that, head over to Patreon. Yeah, join over on Patreon. We've got a, an amazing gift of where we're going to be painting a vulva and a large cock. So see you there, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Oh. <laughs> I forgot to wave.